just uh, dancing, you know, just to get in with the theme. You get dancing good in the film? Here? You got me. channel that is so much fun I had no idea <laughs> but to be honest I have no idea how a movie about unnatural heroes can be marketed with having the characters dance around in a funky 70s or is it 80s 70s or 80s tune but apparently it worked Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing the opening dance in the first place. And having such a good run with the first movie, people, including me, would expect the second one to be good as well, if not better. Well, at least for me, it is safe to say that Marvel blew my mind once again. Just not in the parts where I expected. I will explain to you in a gif after I talk a little bit about the movie. The beginning of the Guardians of the Galaxy start in a very usual way. Since they are a group for hire, they're doing a job. They had hiccups along the way, but the job was done perfectly. Well, almost. Since a certain team member, and I won't mention any names because you could probably guess who this team member is, did something forbidden, even though they left with their prize, their initial client wants them dead. Some shootings in space was involved, but somehow they are able to do a time jump and eventually escape with the help of someone else, who turned out to be Star-Lord's father. And he is much more than just an alien. Apparently, he's a god named Ego. Now, the story will revolve around Star-Lord's father and Star-Lord himself for a few moments, but there's something else too. The good-looking blue Ravager leader that we all know and love is actually being kicked out as a leader. I mean, I would say he's alienated by his own team member, but that would confuse some people. You know, because he's already an alien. I'm so bad at jokes. I'm sorry. <coughs> anyway... When he was about to be jobless, the people who hired Guardians of the Galaxy actually hired Yondu to capture the said Guardians of the Galaxy. This eventually will lead up to the meeting of the two groups and this will shed some light about why Peter was spared by Yondu and why Yondu never delivered Peter to his father. I won't talk more about the rest of the movie. I think if you've watched the movie, you already know what would happen and if you haven't watched the movie, then I think you'll be glad that I didn't reveal too much. Okay, now, this is like a fair warning. If you haven't seen the movie, please stop here. I will talk about the full of spoiler movie review because without the spoiler, I can't fangirl much about this movie and you know how much I love to fangirl about Marvel. Or at least, now you know. My first reaction, the opening was so much fun. Everyone who have watched the first movie knows that most people, if not all, roots for the most adorable character in the team. Whether he is big or small, even though I prefer small, everyone loves to root for the one and the only Groot. Well, yes, I don't have the statistic to, you know, support my claim but the, just 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 pretend that I do have the facts that Groot is the most rooted character on the team. Let's just let's just pretend that. Everyone loves Groot, period. I mean if you love Groot please give this video a thumbs up. And in this opening we could see the itty bitty small Groot just dance his way to the groove while a ton of fighting happening in the background. I am thoroughly entertained by the opening scene alone. I know and understand how difficult it must be for the movie makers to do that particular scene. Most parts of it were computer generated, but the outcome is so real. 
maybe I could feel it better if it were on 40x or IMAX but apparently when I was about to watch it on IMAX the projector broke in the movie theater that I was about to watch it but regardless of that it is still a great opening scene moving on to the overall thinking of the movie I have to say that I don't like this one as much as the first one probably because I don't just save your pitchforks or real forks that you want to throw at me for saying that the second one is not really that good compared to the first one I just think that the first one is really fresh and exciting I mean the second one has similar vibes only that there's no surprise in it because it is much or less similar to the first one however I can say that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is much more personal than the first one with Peter's past being unveiled and there's the relationship between Gamora and her sister Nebula. But with this change of pace in the storyline, there's some significant difference with the characters. Peter Quill is known as the know-it-all, witty, crazy leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy and that part of him is really showed in the first movie. He acts for his own sake, he works for his own sake, and even ditch the Ravager in the process. So he's a complete badass. But in the second movie, we don't see much of that wit from Peter Quill. It's mostly him being sensitive and sad about his father, sometimes even seen as touchy. It's a different perspective with Nebula. In the first movie, she's just someone with a grudge and willing to work with anyone who wants to destroy the galaxy but in here she has a heart and she actually loves Gamora even though the way she showed it is rather unconventional but still we get to see Nebula as this strong tough but caring sister that just can't seem to express herself so there's ups and downs but overall this movie it's a fun experience now I will talk about the characters. The one that I absolutely love, as you might figure out or guess, is actually Nebula. I knew Karen Gillan had to shave her head to play Nebula's part in the first movie, which shows how dedicated she was. However, I'm glad that she doesn't have to shave her head this time, since I adore her glowing red hair in real life. She manages to bring Nebula to life, and even though she already has a crazy outlook, she is also colorful inside. Second favorite is Yondu. Is he annoying? Yes. Is he a frustrating father figure? Yes. But somehow, even though he's like an anti-hero in the first movie, I never really hated him. And it paid off afterwards. Turns out, he's actually quite a gem. His funeral is so emotional, I just want to hug my legs and cry. I can see how he can be such a good father to Peter, but unfortunately the setting doesn't fit. If there's an alter universe where he and Peter is actually father and son, I think that would make a really beautiful story. Of course, of course, for characters, I have to talk about Groot. He's so cute and adorable and I really want to have one for myself. He's so clueless at time and just simply a child. It shows on how he acts and growls. And I was told that Finn Diesel actually does the motion capture for Groot's movement, which is a great dedication from him. Although someone asked me a question, why would Finn Diesel was chosen as a voice of Groot when Groot himself doesn't talk much? Anyone can answer? If, if you do, just comment below. I'm, I'm just, I don't know, I don't know why. Now, begs the question as always, should you see this movie? Yes, 1000% yes. I won't say that this is the greatest Marvel movie because if it isn't obvious enough, Deadpool still has the first place in my heart. But it's pretty entertaining. People of all ages could enjoy it, Marvel's fans can fangirl over it, and there's Groot. When you have Groot in your movie, you just have to love it. You just have to. So, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for listening to my fangirling about Marvel movie. Yet another 
Marvel movie. And thank you so much for your patience. I know I haven't been able to upload any videos lately. It's because I have work. But I'm trying my best to, you know, put a video out there for you guys. So please be patient. And don't forget to click the bell button besides my subscribe button so you would be notified if I do upload something new. I hope you can hear what I just said because my voice was so little. So yeah, thank you again so much for watching and as always, I will see you next time. Bye!